Cruz. Welcome to the Pogrom. This is episode 13. It's going to be a little bit of a weird one just because uh, my stomach is fucking killing me. And I didn't expect that. I expected it to be a nice Monday. We have a surprise guest, too. I know we had a guest last week, but uh, we got another one just for fun doing Paul's pick. We got Drew from Fossilize and Mr. Twilight. What's up, man? What up, what up? And hello to Paulus and Frederick. Yep. We're both sick. Sick up Yeah, today. yeah. Paul's sick. I'm not. Oh, my God. Head. It's the first time I'm the one that's not sick. <laughs> yeah, you are the one that's usually sick. You usually have, like, a like congestion or something. Yeah, well, I mean, with a kid in daycare, it's going to happen. <laughs> pretty, yeah, a bunch of germs. Like... <laughs> germs coming home. Yeah, I got the whole <laughs> Osmosis Jones going on in me right now. Do you remember how, what happens to Osmosis Jones? Like, in the Bill Murray in the movie, why he gets sick? <laughs> no, I think I remember you telling me, though. At the beginning of the movie, Bill Murray, he's like a zookeeper, and he's taunting a chimpanzee with an egg, like a hard-boiled egg, and he drops it in the chimpanzee cage, and he picks it up, and it's got, like, feces on it, and he just eats it anyways. <laughs> what the fuck? See, that's, that's how it's, that's how the movie, that's how the movie starts. That's where Osmosis Jones comes in. <laughs> Damn the movie buff. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, isn't that kind of bizarre? For a kid's movie, that's a little little disgusting. Covered in faces. Yeah, faces. <laughs> in other uh, very sad news, Pee Wee Herman died today. Paul Rubin. What's up with that? I love that guy. Had to go sometime. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. He was a little <laughs> he was a little bit young, seventy. I was hoping, I liked him in uh I was hoping Mr. Bean would go first. Oh, who gives a shit about him? <laughs> exactly. I like that dude in uh, Mystery Man, dude. Wasn't he like the farter guy or the fucking? Yeah, he was that. Always shitting. Yeah, he was that stinky guy. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty. With good. like pimples on his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you showed me that movie. I, I, I enjoyed it for, uh, for what it was. I think William H Macy was in that too. Yeah. Oh, That's just funny. I remember somebody told me that William H Macy. I think it was Angel. He said that William H Macy looked like a human version of the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it. I could see it. Oh yeah. Besides the the sad uh, Paul Rubin, Pee Wee Herman news, other sad news. I fucking miss Verathron. They they were in town on Thursday, and I didn't even I forgot I was gonna go. Yeah. And yeah. I totally like spaced on the fucking date. Yeah. We sent you sent the flyer like months ago, and then we're like, yeah, yeah let's go. And that really sucked. I woke up the next morning. I'm like, kind of upset about that. I'm like, God damn it! It's fucking Verathron. That sucks. They're awesome. Yeah. Where, uh, where were they playing at? Uh, Knucklehead. Dude, uh, fucking Dead Congregations was played there not too long ago too. Yeah. Uh, you remember our friend Black Josh? Did you ever meet that guy? Black Josh. <laughs> yeah, I know Damien knows him. <laughs> uh, is he black? He is black. Oh no. I, I, I don't, no, I don't know him. It's one of Angel's oh. friends. Yeah, one of Angel's friends. His his band opened for fucking Verathron. Uh, and, man, I can't believe I missed that shit. They're they're pretty cool. They're called Unblessing. Yeah, they're they sound good. like um, they sound like blasphemy, but with D beats. It's good stuff. Gotta check that out. You ever heard that, Fred? Unblessing, no. Unblessing, yeah. I know they had some uploads on uh, the No Gleaming Light channel. Yeah. Good shit. Oh, check him out. Oh. Ow, jeez. All right. So, anyways, Drew, uh, what can we talk about here? We can talk about your time in Bloodcom. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start there? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think I do. <laughs> Fred, you're into that band, right? I don't think I've really listened to them. Damn. Or you were just I, into I the wild they... rag stuff. Yeah, but yeah, there's we... a lot of wild rag stuff that I haven't actually. Uh, checked out yet? Dang. There's so much on that label. They're yeah, yeah they're we talk an old band, dude. They're from like the uh, mid '80s, like eight, eighty-five or eighty-six, something like that. Yeah, they were part of the demo series, weren't they? Yeah, like that sort yeah. of. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were no, talking I, to Roman. I, I, I know uh, them, but I haven't, I haven't listened to them yet. Okay. Oh, it's like crossover stuff. Yeah, yeah. Kind Maybe of that's why. Crossover. -y. Well, like more of the interesting crossover, like Worm Act and uh, 
uh, like maybe um, cryptic slaughter or something like that, right? No, no for sure, but it's just not the sort of thing that would wind up at the top of my list. Like oh, SLP okay. kind of sound a little bit too. <clears throat> Yeah, when we, when we had them, uh, were you going to say, Drew? Oh, uh, well, I was seeing if Paul was still there because his mic was mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, I just muted. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I only know of those dudes. They're, well, obviously, they're way older than me, but I only know. Um, I know them through uh, my brother's dad. He was um, band hopping around back then in the 80s and stuff, and uh, he kept them kept in contact with the, most of those members so I just started hanging out with them and uh, they needed a guitar player for a few shows and yeah I just filled in actually I'm sorry it was bass uh, I played bass for them for a short while and the OG bass player that was John Araya wasn't it no John is the singer I could have sworn he was the bass player no no he's the singer dude well I mean from what I understood I've never seen him on the bass was he still in the band when you were there? No, he was living in Canada at the time. I'm not sure whereabouts, but um, we had uh, oh, Ken. <laughs> yeah. um, Ken from, um, uh, what the hell was that band? Um, Leth uh, Lethal, or Fatal Substance, yeah. Uh, I was jamming with those guys for a while too, but they're also, you know, buds with um, all the guys from Bloodcomb. So he filled in on vocals and then I filled in on bass. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, you know, last time or uh, last week when we had a guest, I kind of asked her what uh, kind of well, because she does reviews and um, interviews and stuff. And I was asking her like what, how she kind of got into metal and got you know uh, interested in this kind of stuff. I uh -huh. wanted to ask you something similar, but more of um, kind of your when you started writing and recording and um, maybe some of the like earliest bands you uh, kind of worked with and like influences uh -huh. and things like that. Well, again, it was my brother's dad, well, my stepdad at the time. Um, I was about nine years old when he bought me my first guitar, him and my mom. And um, I just started instantly jamming, like, with him. Like, he didn't even, you know, I didn't have time to, like, really, you know, sit down and practice just with guitar. As soon as he put the guitar in my hands, he showed me how to play power chords, and he just said, okay, do this. And he had my uncle playing drums, and he was playing on the other guitar, and I was instantly jamming, you know, in a band, like, with, with him and my uncle. And we, that's how I learned, you know, timing and how to write music and stuff like that. And that was my, my earliest memories of, you know, getting into heavy music and stuff like that. And his influences have always been, like you were talking earlier, a lot of the crossover stuff, like Warbot and um, you know, S.O.D. and fucking shit like that. So Spastic Blur, maybe? Yeah, Spastic Blur, for sure. Yeah, yeah that, that's the one's favorite of mine, too. So how old were you at, at that time then? Nine. Nine. Okay, so you started pretty early with, like, the thrash kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you do the math, you know, I mean, I'm 35 now. I should be a fucking madman on the guitar, but I never really took it that seriously. And, you know, I mean, I, I play it and I picked it up off and on throughout all the years. But if I was consistent, you know, since then, I probably would have been fucking Malmsteen by now. But I, I, I never took it too seriously, you know. Yeah, that's kind of the interesting thing too. Is like when we, um, when you came to us with with an idea to like start a band, I assumed it was gonna be kind of like um, like a slam brutal death metal kind of thing, because that's what it kind of started as, right? When we first started, you were playing riffs that I could. I was taking a really long time to play. I was like, oh, okay, how the fuck did you do that? He's like, <laughs> I'm like, what the. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, okay, um, I'm gonna have to go note by note here. <laughs> well, that, that's that's always been my preference with death metal, dude. Like, just you know, I mean, not always so technical and brutal, but I mean, you know, like my prime time was in the early 2000s. You know, that scene, you know, when all those bands were coming out and shit. So, like, I, that's what I kind of, you know, wanted to start. But you know, hanging out with you more and more, you know, you kind of introduced me to this modern death metal scene that I, I didn't even know of, honestly, you know, I was just kind of living under a rock when it comes to music. And then you showed me, you know, things that are coming out now, you know, whether you liked it or didn't like it, you were just presenting it to me and I fucking fell in love with it. So when we started playing, I think I kind of, uh, I tried to do something in, in, in that vein and I don't think I executed it too well, but there's some, some hints of it in, in the music that we released. So is this the band that became fossilized? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. 
that was with Dan and, and Paul was actually drumming for us at first and then the guitar player from uh, Miss of Twilight ended up taking over on drums and then um, I think no yeah 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 that's all yeah and Paul just happened to walk into your backyard when we were having this discussion about <laughs> a new drummer. <laughs> well, Paul did look like he was too interested anyway. He was always saying he didn't really care too much about the modern death metal sound, you know, and then James was all about it. So I was like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe he wouldn't mind, you know, and I was like, it's not like we're going to kick him out or anything. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, Paul walks up with his fucking chili cheese fries and he's like, yeah, yeah, you're not kicking me out. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> or he said he said something like that. No, Paul goes. Said. All right, Paul goes. Just kick me out. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kick me out, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you guys. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, no, funny. no, it was a good decision, and I think also having Anthony for the new shit is even phenomenal. better decision, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah cause I mean James is pretty busy now, and. He's uh, pretty caught up with his own solo project, and you know he works real hard, and he's he's doesn't have much free time. And my brother's got nothing but time, and he's a pretty solid drummer. So we're going to use him on the next uh, release. Yeah, that that's what was what was kind of crazy about you two is like, because Drew, Drew, you don't really practice that often, do you? Oh, never. I don't at all. That's why yeah, I don't yeah. Really progress. <laughs> no, but you're you're pretty like solid as a guitar player and same with your brother for like on drums like he doesn't really practice much and he kind of stopped playing for years and years and uh he picked it up almost immediately again like really modern style uh almost like nile type drumming or something you know yeah yeah he's like that well we're both like that dude i mean like it's just you know i have learned what i've learned over the years and it's just it's always going to be there you know what i mean um I wish I could progress a little bit and learn new things and new techniques, but I just, uh, for one, I just don't really have the desire. Like, I'm happy with, you know, what I know now and what I can, you know, project now. So I, I think that's part of why I don't practice, and I feel he's probably in the same boat with that, you know. He, he doesn't really want to learn anything new and has no desire or need to, so. Yeah, you guys are able to do what you want when you want, so there's, real, there's really no need to even kind of keep up. Which we'll is all, at all? Which is all the stuff you guys know now is like really intricate shit. Anyway, speaking from uh, you know the brutal slam shit that you're able to do, and uh, some of your you know arpeggios, and then just Anthony's blasting and extreme drumming in general is just like already pretty top tier. Yeah, dude. Well, like I was saying, you know, when I was uh, when I was heavily into the scene and you know really really into death metal and just aggressive music, it was in the early 2000s, and around that time, that's when um, all these bands were kind of sounding the same, you know, like you can call it slam now, but a lot of it was just, um, I guess in, in modern terms, it was just kind of technical and real groovy shit, you know, like early dying fetus kind of sounds and, yeah. um, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, you know, you, you're into all that stuff too, you know, so based upon those kinds of influences, I think that's where we, we learned most of what we wanted to learn and everything after that is just like eh, eh, who cares don't need to learn that don't eh, who cares you know like i think with our influences we could do what we you know what we'd like to do and that's just where we draw the line honestly yeah yeah and outside of like a few outlier bands that you guys are like now into it seems like you guys are both really um kind of into the same stuff you originally were when we all met and your guys's skill level this isn't a diss or anything, but your guys' skill level hasn't really changed. Ooh. You guys were just good from the beginning. Ooh. Yeah, well, I mean, no, I, they, I don't they know were if it's good or not. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or not, but it's just it's just what we what we know how to do and what we're what we're happy and content with. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like it's the exact opposite with me and Paul. I feel like again, no diss, but we've I feel like we've progressed a lot over the years and. We're still kind could, of yeah. um, you definitely figuring have. things you out could, like uh, that. Yeah, I mean, you could you could see the progression with you guys by just going to your your YouTube channel, the Big Billy Strikes Back or whatever it is, dude. Like mm -hmm. you can see some of your early recordings up until the modern stuff, dude. And it, you guys progressed a lot, you know. Especially Paul, dude. Paul's gotten really fucking good. Yeah, I can barely uh, keep a four count back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when you guys are playing those backyard shows and your brother's fucking flopping around on the floor and shit yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's true flopping around with the early necrotic mess stuff compared to where galicia is now for example it's uh it's totally different oh yeah yeah 
That's when I was barely learning how to play. I think that's why we kind of chose death grind as a genre because we're like, oh, we can probably, we can probably with jive it. with death. Yeah, we can probably get away with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I wanted to mention uh, Drew is like uh, my my godfather of uh, getting me into metal, basically, because uh, I knew Anthony, his brother, in like middle school, and this guy was showing me like Morbid Angel and uh, Deicide and shit, and then from there, that's kind of where I got into like more brutal shit and like Devourment and Infernal Revulsion, basically from word of mouth. Uh, from Anthony from Drew so fucking this is uh, the guy that uh, started my hate for thrash basically hate for thrash <laughs> hate for thrash <laughs> pay to play pay to play pay to play yeah everything Anthony was showing all his friends his little buds at the time he was you know he was getting all that shit from me I mean we're we're almost eight years apart or seven years apart but um yeah it's pretty pretty big age gap so you know i was obviously listening to that stuff before he was and everything that i showed him he was probably just you know presenting it to all his buds and stuff yeah cause and he, was... le he let you know that right one night when he was drunk <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh uh, paul yeah paul did <laughs> yeah but uh, at the time him and his brother his twin brother they they really were identical so like for the longest time i didn't know which <laughs> one of them which, yeah which one of them had said it i don't know if it was daniel and i didn't know if it was paul and um he's like ripped out of his mind dude like his eyes are like cockeyed and shit and he's like hey man <laughs> like he's like hey dude like i just i just really want to thank you man and, and i was like thank me for what dude he's like dude he's all you fucking showed your brother death metal man and your brother showed me so much shit so in a way he's like i have you to thank man i just want to say thank you bro and i was like all right dude like <laughs> we're not worthy we're not worthy hell yeah does this guy know how to party or what <laughs> that was cool though I, I, for the longest time I don't know which one of you it was until I think I actually asked you directly and I told you the story and you're like oh yeah that was me dick oh <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. uh, you remember that because no. yeah. <laughs> that was before any of us really uh, like, hung out, hung out at all right what do you mean I mean that, that was before any of us really like hung out like on a fucking personal level right we kind of just knew oh, you yeah, as a, at the Anthony's time, brother for a while yeah at the time you guys were a little young you know what I mean like uh, but I mean as you guys got older or whatever we just kind of just started hanging out you know had you know same same uh same habits I guess you know and um yeah I think I think we just kind of just started vibing as, as you guys got older and stuff but at that time I mean you guys were still pretty young you know so I don't think we were hanging out back then yeah yeah, we we were still kind of getting our footing with like band stuff at the time too. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of wanted to go off on a little side thing. I think we we can kind of go into uh, maybe the Miss of Twilight stuff after. But um, I had mentioned this to Paul, and I think Drew, you were setting up. Fred heard me for like a second, but um, I was telling these guys yesterday that I went to um, my cousin's graduation party yesterday. And I think that's maybe where I got, I don't know, food poisoning or some shit. But anyways, I met this guy who I thought he was my second cousin, <laughs> but he what? he's not. He's like my, gr my grandfather's sister-in-law's son. That's right. That's true. That's yeah. no blood. There's no blood there. No, 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 no. There's no blood. Because somebody said, this, my dad's like, this is your cousin. I'm like, how is this guy my cousin? I go, oh, so we're not related. No. <laughs> okay. But anyways, I ended up sitting at a table uh, next to this guy. And he looked like little Vince. I wish I, I had a picture of him or something, but he looked like little Vince. And um, he looked like a peer. I thought this guy was may at maybe at the oldest 35. No gray hair, like no wrinkles. He, he looked like a college student. And he's talking to me like a peer. He didn't talk like an old guy. He talked like a young guy. And he's telling me the story. He's like, he's like, oh, I remember I stayed over at um, your, grand your grandparents' house uh, in Pico Rivera. And your dad and your brother were there. And uh, he's like, I, I didn't have a good time. I remember uh, I was scared. I was a little kid. And I go, oh, okay, well, how old was my dad? Like 30 at the time? He goes, oh, no, he was 10. He's 10. <laughs> well, how old? How the fuck? Old? I said, my dad was born in 62. And this guy goes, oh, I'm born in 64. Uh, 64. Yeah. <laughs> and, and my mom is sitting across from this guy, and my aunt's boyfriend is sitting across from him. And he goes, 
He's like, you weren't burning 64. He goes, you're pulling my leg. He goes, you're a time traveler. And he goes, no, no, you wouldn't be saying that if I took my glasses off. I, I don't know what that means. Maybe he has a little bit of wrinkles. But we all kind of like, it got awkward for a second. We all sat there like, what in the fuck is this? It's like an Andy Milanakis kind of situation. He looks like a college student. The guy's 58. It was so fucking weird. Dude, but you don't have a brother. It was, what's up? You don't have a brother. What are you talking about? Because he, he said, said that, that he, he was with your dad and your brother. Did he mean uh, Gary? No, no. I meant, yeah, I meant Gary, my uncle. Oh, okay. Oh, oh your dad's when, when, the, when they were kids. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it was just really weird. It, it was totally like Andy Milanakis syndrome. Did you guys ever confirm it? Did you pull out the ID or? <laughs> no, but but like they didn't make a big deal. I, I My dad came and sat with us and I said, hey, how old is this guy? He goes, oh, not this again. <laughs> so not Dude. the first time this has come up. Seriously, like it's it was so fucking weird. Some uncanny shit. Yeah, but, but nonetheless, it was true, or he was fucking with you. Yeah, no, no, it was true. He's fifty-eight, but he looks like he's like in his thirties or something. <laughs> like little Vince now. Oh man. Yeah, I just I just wanted to tell that because it was it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> fucking damn. That's but anyways, <laughs> Would that tell Paul, me? what what the hell is Paul? Maybe you can start us off with this. How the hell does um, Mist of Twilight start? What is the origin of uh, of that band? I honestly, I'm probably gonna say it as good as you because I truly don't remember. I, I think know it was. That, I think it was your <laughs> idea. Yeah, I know that I told you that. Hey, let's start like a <laughs> melodic death metal band. Uh, you know, I was listening to a lot of dark tranquility and in flames and you know shit like that at the gates and um yeah i wanted to do something we haven't done before haven't really touched on which was uh you know that sort of gothenburg style of uh a melodic death metal and um i'm not really sure how we got you know drew and james into the picture but i know that we were probably practicing what you had so far like just you and i and then we maybe brought drew in on the bass i remember we had raf oh okay we had raf we had a song that we scrapped oh and yeah, then yeah, lot, yeah and then one that we scrapped went to um that next single that drew likes mm. oh, okay yeah so that that was a lot of the scrapped first song and then i remember uh, raf like not being able to jam as much, right? No, no, he just didn't want to. Like, we got James on board because James just kind of messaged me on Instagram. He already knew who we were and he wanted to jam, and I didn't think he was serious, but he came through and Raph heard one of our rehearsals and he goes, Oh, this guy's better than me at this. Uh, he can go ahead and just do it. That's cool. Oh, okay. I can't Anyways. speak for, for the rest of them, but I mean, on my part, um, it was just kind of a mutual agreement between me and Daniel. Um, I had asked him to play with Fossilized, you know, and I knew it wasn't really his cup of tea. And As a said, filler. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, he's like, I'll do that. He's all, you play bass with my project. And, and, you know, it wasn't really, you know, my style either. But I said, okay, you know, do this for me. I'll do that for you or whatever. So that's how I started playing bass for you guys in Mist, you know. <clears throat> you know, one, one more thing about uh, that, that little story I was just saying. Um, that that shocked me more than the fucking time that we saw the UFOs in your backyard. <laughs> that was like that was like way more shocking. That was like meeting the alien. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, it was like meeting we, the we, alien. We need to un we need to unpack this. Okay, let's do some it. Some of us some of us weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone yeah. there there was there was like a party going on and everybody saw it. Everybody saw them. Well, elaborate on it, dude. Fred wants to know. Yes, yeah, uh, please. Like, uh, okay. how would you I explain that? I, I need shapes, lights, I need colors, proximity. Lights, lights, uh, kind of blinking on and off, and like moving around and like fucking in formation. At like in formation at like zippy speeds that nothing could move. Nothing can move that fast. Mind you, like, like, way and, too and, high of an altitude. Yeah, to be yeah. Drones to be drones. Yeah, the, these are like. High these look like stars they're that far away and they're like moving around in formation and there's probably like i don't know what five of them 
it was varying, bro. Like, at first there was just one, and it was moving around, and I was like, what the fuck? And then everybody was looking at the sky, and then another one came, and then another one came, and then one would disappear, and then there was only two, and then there was three all of a sudden, and then there was only one again, and then there was seven, and it was like, what the fuck? And then they all started, you know, moving in formation and zipping around, doing some crazy shit, and there was about ten people in my backyard, all drunk out of their minds, all witnessing this. Yeah, this everybody <laughs> saw it. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. That's what Dan's talking about. I love about. it. Yeah. Mm. And then Uncle Jesse saw him and he goes, Who's that, Metallica? <laughs> <laughs> Metallica? Yeah, Fred doesn't know that inside joke either. Dude. No, Fred doesn't know <laughs> Uncle Jesse. But, uh, yeah, this is Drew's <laughs> uncle. And every time we put on anything, any anything yeah. that's, like, metal at all, he goes, we could put Hey, on... who's that, Metallica? <laughs> who's that, Metallica? <laughs> yeah, we could put on this carbonized record and he'll be like, Who's that, Metallica? <laughs> yeah, that's the heaviest band that he knows. He's an older guy. He's not really into metal, but he likes Metallica, so he thinks everything is Metallica. Fred, do you remember the uh, the booklet for the Warriors Chalice CD that I sent you? Which one? The uh, the blue one, the Atlantic Storms. Yeah. Do you remember the picture of that guy sleeping in an office chair with a Del Taco box on him? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's Uncle Jesse. <laughs> I can't believe you put that. I in just remember, I just remember getting that EP and looking at uh, the cover, listening to it, being like, "Yeah, they, this works." And looking at the photo on the back, I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> Did they have the band pick in it too, or no? Yeah, it's on the back. <laughs> that just looks funny too. <laughs> And like, but the thing is, though, after after the last release, it it, it just works so well. <laughs> like it, it it all comes together. Oh yeah, that uh, with that uh, power metal one. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is great, by the way. I st- I still play it. Oh yeah, I was listening to that. Uh, I think last week too. It's still good. Yeah, vocals could uh, use a little work, but uh, we'll we'll get them next time, eh? No, they're charming. Yeah, no, the <laughs> charmingly the, bad. <laughs> it's a it's a raw charm. I, I dig it the way it is. I I remember everyone was there while I was recording that, and I was like, I was like, can everybody just go away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like your first time doing vocals like that, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and everyone's standing around. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like Christian when he was doing his black metal vocals and <laughs> yeah, but everyone was laughing right their fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christian's but, song is is going to be on the uh, compilation. No? no, 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 that's going to be on the compilation. Um, no, so none oh, of that's man. really available yet. Yeah, Balsam <laughs> sperm everywhere. Yeah. yeah, one of the lyrics he wrote on a piece of paper it says "wasted sperm everywhere." <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can't wait to hear Fred's feedback on that shit. Man. <laughs> it's, 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 the music is actually pretty good, but just don't read the lyrics, dude. Don't ever read the lyrics. I think we'll I might still we'll have the lyrics. On that. I have them. They're written, they're written here in blue Sharpie. It says, religion is a bitch with a spell. False <laughs> control, fear of hell. Death, pain, and fear is all they want you to hear. World's full of shit. Fuck the world, eat a bag of dicks. Wasted sperm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of magical, I think. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christian, man. Well, I, they, they I put mean, a the, lot the of... The overall um, song is good. They put a lot of... Uh, or Paul put a lot of like effect and, and reverb on the vocals, so what they end up sounding like is Arcanum. And if you can imagine okay. what that sounds like without anything, it, it, it just sounds fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do, you, do you remember the, the music video that Gava Fran Trulen, where he's just yep. dressed as a troll and he's like walking through the woods going, <laughs> Yep. It sounds like that. It sounds like that. I love that he's motioning like he's singing, but with the mask, there's no movement in the face whatsoever. Come on, come on. That's that riff that goes bow 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 bow. Yeah, great song, great album. It is actually a pretty good album. 
Those first three are brilliant. Love them. Um, yeah, the second one is the one that's more like, uh, like kind of technical in a way, right? Where he's like kind of like leaning over with the weapons in his hand. Uh, no, that's the third one. That's camping. Yeah, yeah, the you're second, right about that. The second one is one where he's holding the uh, the spiky thing. I liked um I like the one where I think he came back was it Anti Cosmos? Yep. Yeah, yeah, Anti Cosmos was really cool. Sparte. That was a good song. Yeah. They, they don't really have any well, I'd say they he doesn't really have any weak moments, but uh some are better than others, I guess. Mm. Oh, so yeah, I would agree, I would agree with that. Doesn't he have an album called Yeah, he has an album called <laughs> yes. <laughs> With like those, those like tick mark things, and it's got like a big yeah. werewolf on it. The uh, the eleven thorns. Yeah. All right. Yes. So, anyways, um, yeah, <laughs> we don't have to stay on this for too too long, but um, yeah, what 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 do you think about the uh, Miss the Twilight release, kind of in retrospective, and uh, maybe some of your thoughts on like the experience of kind of getting through all that stuff. Talking to me Mr. or Mr. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Drewby Do. Oh, um, well, like I was mentioning earlier, like um, you know, that's not it's not really my my style of music, dude. But I mean, playing it was probably more fun than I've ever had fucking playing in a band, even on guitar, doing the shit that I love to play, dude. Because it was, for one, it was challenging, you know, just music wise, it was challenging. But then again, on the bass and me not being, you know, technically a bass player. It was, it was pretty challenging, and um, you know, it was really fun. More than that, dude, it was just, it was really fun, and I'm very proud of that. And I've told you, Daniel, multiple times, I'm more proud of that than my own stuff, dude. But I really, really like it, and especially the single that we released. You know, I'm not sure if Fred have, has heard it because you haven't put it on Spotify or anything yet. I think it's only on YouTube, but the single. Well, he has was, the CD. It's on the CD as the bonus track. Yeah, oh, that's it. right. The alleviation, yeah, that, that yeah, that was, was great, really good. Yeah, I, I love that stuff, dude. Um, I wrote lyrics on one of the songs on the the main release, and then I wrote the lyrics on that that last one, alleviation, and it was just like, I don't know, man. I I really love playing that kind of shit, you know. But when I hear bands that sound like that, for whatever reason, you know, it's just really not my style. But I had so much fucking fun playing it, and I'm very proud of it, like to this day, dude. Like I I probably play, you know, hollow. Game I play my own stuff, dude. Like, I really, really like that. And Paul and Daniel, they're just like, whatever about it, you know. But me personally, I, I fucking love it, dude. I, I really do. I love the artwork. I love the writing. I love the lyrics. I love the delivery. I love, you know, everything about that shit. Like, a lot. I don't know why, but there you have it. Yeah, because you even did the, the CD layout for uh, the booklet and stuff, too. Which is, like, really fucking probably the best one that... The bunch of burner recordings came out with. It, it, it definitely looks the best. Beautiful. Definitely, yeah. It's fucking beautiful, dude. It's yeah. badass, dude. I love it, dude. Like, you know, the I just, I mean, I didn't want to use anything other than the artwork we already have, you know. So that's why I just zoomed in on some of the pieces of the the main, you know, the main artwork that um that that guy Hal Bastard had drew up or painted, I should say, painted up for Daniel. You know, I just zoomed in on some parts of that and I just used those for individual. Um, and you know individual parts of the of the booklet for each song you know and it, it worked out pretty good and especially the colors too you know changing the colors around a little bit and everything kind of worked really good it looked fucking beautiful it sounds fucking awesome dude like i really really love that release super proud of it oh yeah when dan sent me a copy of it the uh first thing i thought when i saw the artwork was kind of a blue toned version of tiamat's uh wild honey that same kind of vibe to it but more dusky i guess Hmm. Well, s same artist. Uh, what's his name? Christian Whalen. Yeah. We didn't get Christian Whalen yeah. to do ours, but I, the guy that I uh, got, it was like a guy from Mexico. I basically said, yeah, like do this like Christian Whalen style, you know, butterflies and uh, some bugs, maybe uh, some peacock feathers, whatnot. And he, <laughs> he gave us that. <laughs> well, because there's always like bugs on there. A lot of butterflies. There's a lot of butterflies on those album covers, if you'll notice. Yeah. And what I, kind of I don't know if I me a little bit so. is like the 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 album it has you know butterflies like you said and and um, like some chick you know or whatever but what kind of throws people off well 
what threw me off, I should say, is like the seaweed, you know? Like, it almost gives, like, a vibe like you're in the ocean because of seaweed that's around or whatever, but then there's a chick and then there's butterflies and shit. And it's just, I don't know, I, I like that artwork. It's pretty good, dude. Yeah, that's what I always liked about Kristen Whalen's artwork. It, it's like, it's almost like poetry, but put into a painting. But uh, it is. It's like that. <laughs> and, but it, no, but it's awesome. They always look awesome. And I really yeah, wanted cool. you to, cool to, to, to buy that uh, piece. Very... Go ahead, Fred. So, no, I, I'm just saying it, it's cool that you say that uh, has underwater vibe to it because I got a really like dusk nighttime kind of feel to it. But now that I'm looking yeah, at it, yeah, I did too. Yeah, it's uh, I totally see the underwater thing, and that's I never interpreted even, that's that. It, it's that's seaweed either. <laughs> that's even weirder because then he's seeing like butterflies flying around underwater, and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> that's and and I feel like. Yeah, I, I feel like with album covers too, I, I feel like the color has to, this this may be just my fucking mind working, but I feel like the music kind of has to fit what the color is and blue, the blue green, I feel uh, fits the, the kind of the narrative of like Mist of Twilight in general. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, just taking a drag of the cigarette here. Yeah, I was checking my phone. I was gonna say, um, Drew, with like this, this, that kind of music, like the melodic death metal stuff, is it that you don't enjoy that stuff, or because I feel like I've showed you a few things that are like that I thought were kind of similar, like um, Ill Disposed. I know you you kind of like that one, uh, the one with the playing cards on it, the Four Seasons or whatever. Yeah, that was really good. Um, I also <laughs> really enjoyed the first um, the first release from uh, At the Gates. You know, I remember you showing me that one. Out. That was pretty good too. I liked it a lot. Oh yeah, the the demo, not the not the album. The gardens. You, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, the Gardens of Grief. And then, like, uh, I I always figured the one band, if we did sound like anybody, maybe a Canaris Quintet. Kind of a similar vibe, similar uh, color scheme too. Not familiar, bro. I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, the one with like that dude crying on it, or like the eye. I yeah, no, Drew, you do know that one. That's the how does that fucking riff go? Remember that thing? <laughs> Not so much, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about this riff? <laughs> Just say yeah. You don't remember that? Just say yeah. Just say sounds yeah. like fucking. It sounds like <laughs> intestine bowelism, dude. When you're doing all that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, they're sick. <clears throat> yeah, Paulie showed me those guys. They're they're awesome. I love that shit. Yeah, the suffocation, <clears throat> brutal death metal with melodic shit. Yeah, yeah. Paul, have you um, seen their ki their Kill Town live videos? They're really cool. No, I don't think so. It's like super HD and the 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 music, the sound quality is really good on those. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll watch that shit. Yeah, stench reel. Dude, I don't, I don't mean to like a uh, like fucking uh, hijack your podcast or anything, dude. Dude, hijack! Kinda, you're here. What the hell? I I, I kind of want to know like how you guys came into uh, friendship with Fred and how this whole thing started because you know it's been pretty vague when you've been talking to me personally about it. You know, like oh yeah, we got a podcast. You know, this dude Fred, he lives in Canada, this and that or whatever. <laughs> but how did you how did you guys meet? Like how like how did this become like um? That's on episode one, bro. No, it definitely kidding. sounds random when you put it that way. <laughs> you know, I, I told this one last time. Why don't you go ahead with this one, Fred? Yeah, from your perspective. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> one day I get a message in my DMs on Instagram saying, Hey, you like Sacramento and Bolshman, right? And because I had posted my copy of... That must that uh, must have been fuck, Paul. The <laughs> no. That no, was it, was Dan. Dan. it was Dan. It was Dan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, I, posted I a went copy searching of my, for um, hashtags of Axis of Advance. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I posted the Distracting Stone, I think. And, uh, yeah, he asked me if I wanted to uh, give uh, Galicia a listen, and I did. I liked it. And he sent me the CD, and we were, we've were we been chatting ever since. Okay, so you guys yeah, that... reached out from, like... Okay, from Instagram and stuff. And oh, I guess you were kind of looking for somebody that was into the same music taste as you, right, Dan? I was looking for somebody who would like Galicia. Well, fans of. Yeah, I hashtag it. Fans of Axis are definitely fans of Galicia, dude. Fans 
are definitely fans of Glacia. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what I went looking for. And I think me and Fred had kind of been um, just chatting back and forth for a while. And then we kind of started the label uh, like in December of this last year, like, you know, last December. And we kind of started churning out a few CDs here and there. And um, Fred would kind of um, just just give us a, a little kind of summary review on his um, Instagram and give us a little bit of clout here. And uh, I was like, all right, cool. We got a cool thing going here. And then I, Paul kind of just came to the by doing a podcast. And he goes, uh, ask, ask this Black Death Horizon guy if he'll do it. And uh, he was down to do it. And uh, here we are, like 13 weeks later. Yep. And this is episode what now? This is 13. Lucky number 13. Damn. Yes, sir. You guys, you guys yeah, maybe that's it, why uh, my stomach's all fucked up. <laughs> and I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, and Paul's sick. <laughs> Then we and got that's through. why uh, I'm half a bottle in on whiskey right now. <laughs> we <laughs> must be the whiskey. Must be whiskey. the whiskey. <laughs> well, the hippies and the cowboys. Dude, that song is so fucking good. Uh, must be the whiskey. Yeah, it is good, dude. It's fucking uh, Dude, I mean, Cody Jinx, he's, he's fucking dope, dude. I mean, I don't know if you guys want to talk about, like, the outlaw country shit on this kind of podcast, but, dude, I, I love that stuff so much. Dude. Nah. <laughs> Fred, you like Outlaw Country? Um, I'm trying to find a tactful answer. No. Uh, just say fuck no, bro. <laughs> say fuck that hippie hick shit, bro. Just, just, just say it, dude. <laughs> no, like country is something I've never been able to get into. It just doesn't, uh, just doesn't drive with me. I used to think the same, dude, but it's only because of the bullshit that's on the radio. You know, like, I fucking hate radio country, that, that country pop shit or whatever. Catfish, but got I mean, a little bit of chicken fried. Yeah, I Get hate that shit. on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't dig that shit, bro. I hate it, dude. I really hate it. But, I mean, like, you know, old school country, in the 80s, 90s country, or even the modern, um, you know, outlaw stuff or whatever. Like, I've been pretty heavy into that shit lately. I, I really like it a lot. But You know, um, I'm, I'm willing to give anything a try, so... I mean, if there's uh, uh, recommendations, out, um, my yeah, I'll, I'll give yeah. them a spin for sure. Check out the uh, the devil. The devil makes three. They're really good. Um, you can check out uh, Brent Cobb. He's also really good. Um, who else do I buy bump and like? Oh, Cody Jinx, of course. You know, like Paul saying he likes Cody Jinx. Cody Jinx is good. Um, what else? What else? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to go through my Spotify, dude. But those three right there, I mean, that'll give you an idea. That'll give you an idea. All right. I'll give them a listen. You drink whiskey? No. You drink... No, I'm a beer guy. <clears throat> have you been divorced? <laughs> no. <laughs> you ever kill somebody? I'm <laughs> just kidding, man. <laughs> it's, it's those kind of vibes, though, dude. You know the feds I mean? are I'm listening. Just, I'm just trying to dance around the yes answer. This is really awkward. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, those three bands, you'll. Um, I mean, you'll get the idea. All right. All right. Fred, oh, you ever yeah, listen to um, Throssenblatt? You know who that is? Huh. No. They're from like. A weird area of Canada where it's like an island. I forget the name of the place. Thrallsonblad. They were like, um, the, the name is weird to spell. But like, where are they from? They're from New Brunswick. You know where that is, right? Yeah. Yeah, these guys, I guess, kind of were part of the like neo, what, not neo, what, do you, what would you even call that? Post black metal scene, kind of? Almost like, uh, almost okay. like Woods of Ypres or something. You know who that is? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I saw them. I saw them live. It was Vipre? Yeah, I, I thought they were pretty pretty decent for uh, what they were. But I, I, I never was going to really say got into them. Like I, I appreciated them, but it didn't uh, wasn't something I felt the need to play very often, if at all. Yeah, I was going to. Well, uh, Paul, you know Throssenblatt, right? Oh yeah, the fucking the freaking great one album. Yeah, yeah, because those those are the songs we would sing with Kyle when we would get all drunk. We would. Uh, uh, do Goose River and um, what was the other one? Maritime the Maritime Shore. Shores. Yeah, and I remember I showed Drew those songs just because it reminded me of um, the kind of outlaw country he was listening to. I'm like, if you like that, I think you'll like this. And uh, I think those were those were a winner. 
chicken dinner. <laughs> yes, sir. There we go. They're all some black. All right, I'll check them out too. They're also yeah, all the food. the the wanderer on the continent of saplings album is. Uh, I mean, there's two there's two songs on there that we just said that are like uh, kind of folkish, and then the rest are this kind of post black metal thing. But it's really still not bad for uh, post black metal. I know people have uh, an idea of what that means, you know. Yeah, yeah, it kind of causes like a knee jerk reaction, You're like oh. <laughs> but then some of it's fine, but so it depends. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of that stuff kind of comes from Over, but I liked Over, but uh, I feel like a lot of the bands that kind of take influence from Over. Um, you, you said you didn't like take Evoken, it. though, right, Dan? No, I do like Evoken, the doom metal band, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I like all that stuff. Okay, well, I was just, you know, asking because I remember. Um, we're talking about over for for a little bit, and then I brought up Evoking, and then we're talking about certain albums or whatever. And I I, I could have sworn you said you weren't a fan, dude. But like I was just I don't know. I'm trying to fucking remember, dude. Like I'm not a fucking um, <clears throat> not an encyclopedia like you guys. You know, I'm just trying to fucking work with what I got. But <clears throat> as far as the folky stuff, um, were you into Rome at all, Dan? And when I yeah, dude, you know? yeah, they were great. I think I told you, you a meet. Fred, sorry. Uh, Rome. Were you ever into Rome? No. No. You, no, you no they, like they were them, covered in. Or you haven't heard it. Frederick. No, I don't think I've heard it. Fred. Yeah, I. Kn- they. They. <laughs> <laughs> they I, I told Drew when he showed me that band. I was like, "Oh, dude, this is totally like Death in June uh, worship kind of stuff." Yeah, they sounded a lot like Rome when he showed me that band. I was like, wow, dude, this is exactly the same kind of style, dude. Yeah, the, it's like a really, really small um, genre of something called like neo, neo-folk, neo I guess, or acid folk or something like that. Okay. Yeah, well, I, yeah I, 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 know, I know that Rome was... Um, they were featured in an interview by that magazine, you might know, um, what the hell were they called? The Convivial Hermit. Do you know that one? I know the Xenia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rome was uh, featured like on an interview, and uh, that's what got me interested in them. And then Drew just happened to know who they were, and I thought they were yeah, it sounded like Death and June, good, but French, a French Death and June. It sounds very okay. revolutionary. It's cool. Huh. Well, um, oh, oh, almost in an industrial kind of way, I guess. I was gonna say. Well, speaking of acid, um, maybe we should get into the album uh, Disharmonization. That we're Let's uh, do it. talking about this time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's a Swedish uh, three-piece uh, band. Uh, some members from Entombed, I think the bass player Lars, and then uh, two members from Therion for guitars, keyboard, and uh, drums. And um, yeah, I think Dan showed me this album while we were in like high school or something. And yeah, it's like one of those albums that definitely keeps your attention and um it's pretty jarring and unsettling to listen to (laughs) it's kind of scary yeah and uh, it's kind of creepy it's like a haunted sounding album yeah and it's uh Mm. well i obviously love it i feel like it's like a perfect album um where you know all the musicians are sort of isolated doing their own things but when it all comes together it sounds like perfect songs like they're they're flowing and even cutting song structures into the next parts and making them uh you know cohesive rather than sounding like something that's kind of um you know all in the kitchen sink it sounds like all their influences are you know actually well made and uh and taken uh, quite seriously because doing this type of music is like I can't even imagine writing it or rehearsing it but they got it down like perfectly on this album yeah I, I don't know if that the music is really that hard to play but what yeah drums, exactly what you said. <laughs> well guitar wise maybe not the drums drums maybe so but yeah it, it all does flow really nicely and it, it does it you know what it kind of does I think 
that like what would kind of set this in the same uh, realm as like death metal in general is you know how a lot of death metal bands they will do these like one-off things they'll be like a one count of something and then come back to uh the original riff that they were writing yeah i, I feel like this does that this kind of has more of a death metal structure rather than uh, anything else and i don't even really want to call this a, a prog album because mm -hmm. i don't know if I feel like people have a, a pre like a preconceived uh, thought in their head of what they think of when they think of like um, prog and avant garde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Progressive metal in general. Yeah. And I, I th this is just so much different because when you hear oh this is a prog death metal band you kind of we we've talked about this before but like pestilence. Yeah. Yeah. The this doesn't do that at all. There's like none of that. This is kind of barely metal at all. I feel like this one's. If anything, more death grind than uh, than like regular death metal, at least in their more uh, like chugging riffs and just uh, also having to do with like Voivod's like uh, oh yeah yeah totally Voivod fucking, uh, you know dissonant riffs and shit. Yeah, and there is disharmony on it. Like there there are riffs that have a backing guitar and they're harmonized, but in, a, in in like the wrong way, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There better be disharmony on it. <laughs> oh, there definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, false advertising. Fred uh, or Dan, what what do you think of this album? Because you know you showed it to me. Um, when I heard this, when I first heard this, I was in like the midst of getting into uh, Swedish and Finnish death metal. And this was on the same channel as like all the the, the Finnish stuff that um, Jesus Salen, he was called something else back then. I think it was called like Zizmic Excremation back in the day. And uh, the, it's, it's kind of weird because the first song that I heard off of this was um, the instrumental Spanish Fly. Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought it. <laughs> yeah, it, it just flows really well. The fucking bass kind of keeps. The, the bass is working as like its own thing in this yeah it's like totally it's, it's isolated work. from everything it's like counterpointing or not even counterpointing just doing its own melody lines and shit in in a sense maybe the guitars on this aren't that important i feel like the bass might be a more important um instrument for this album yeah the guitars are more mm. textural where like in goth music like what's leading it is the bass you know so I, I, I definitely think the bass is, you know, the focal point of this. But I feel like you can listen to this album each time focusing on one instrument and get so much out of just that. And then coming back, listening to it as just a whole. And it's, uh, you know, it comes together really well. But yeah, but like you said, um, I, not, not only that, but I think these songs work really well together just as songs. Like, everything on here to me is memorable. Yeah. All the vocal parts, all the guitar parts, all the drum, like, everything as a song just works. So I'm saying it's, like, perfect. I wouldn't remove anything or add anything to these songs. They're so great. And also, it's 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 so different from anything. There's there's really nothing, um, there's, there's, there's no other band that has ever tried to emulate what this album does i don't think yeah there's there's some but i'll get into that later um it it's not exactly like it but you know it's they're they're trying to kind of around the ballpark of this and um you know swedish can get weird too finland <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of yeah, this definitely. Fred? so i was familiar with um <clears throat> sorry i am losing my Dang. voice uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was familiar with um, their demos and uh, for the security, but I never actually got around to checking out Disharmonization until this past week. I don't know why. It's been like 20 years, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I start playing it, and my first note on here is surfer rock vibes. And I remember like, as soon as I started playing, I'm like, God damn it, Paul. What the, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, like my next it. note is, what is this bullshit? And it feels like a <laughs> Quentin Tarantino movie. Yep. And then it the then five, it bounces six, seven, to eights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it bounces to track two, which I think is uh, Vlad Tepes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 
that one really weirded me out because it reminded me a lot of like more avant-garde Zool kind of things. Like I don't know if you know the the French Shub Nigarath and the album Les Mots Bon Vite. It's kind of like um, an offshoot of magma sort of music. Okay. Um, but that really brought that out a lot, and that's actually an album I really really enjoy. So that kind of got my attention more, and then after that, it started like pulling in more of the metal into it and that uh, started making a bit more sense and I was hearing a lot of like you know Afflicted and uh, Prodigal Son oh of course and, yeah. uh, yes sir good album Dis- Disgraces um, I think it was an unreleased second album that came out after yeah volume album, two yeah. volume two yeah I heard a lot of that in there too I mean obviously it wasn't an influence but uh, just reminiscent of that uh yeah, no, it's it's a really fun album, and I, I'm going to revisit this one. I don't know how frequently I'll revisit it, because I have to be in the mood for it, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it is. I like it. All right, let's get to the hot take. Drew. Yo. What do you think of this album? <clears throat> oh, damn. Um, well, Daniel was showing it. Uh, he was showing it to me the other night at... at um, I had heard, you know, for the security before, I think either from him or James or whatever, and I liked that one. It was pretty cool. I really fucking liked the artwork on it. Yeah. But, you know, this, um, this uh, what's the album name again? Disharmonization. This yeah, Disharmonization. It was like, um, it was it was so bizarre to me because I had personally never heard anything like that. You know what I mean? And I was just like, okay, for one every like i mean from start to finish on the entire album it it's just sounds like an endless improv to me like um almost as if like the drummer was just writing drum tracks and then the rest of the band just kind of just did whatever the fuck they wanted over it very now, very well could have been yeah free jazz <clears throat> type shit yeah that that's that's you know but i mean like i've told daniel like i don't um I don't really dissect music the way you guys do and you know like I just I just hear what I hear and my first initial response was like dude this kind of reminds me of like a wacky version of I don't know let's say Carcass meets Primus or yeah, some kind of I was weird getting shit. some Primus yeah. shit from here too Yeah just the bass is, yeah. is funky and the vocals kind of remind me of, of Carcass a little bit and um it was just you know it's not something that I can dissect as well as you guys but like for me, it was just like, uh, what the fuck is going on here, dude? Like, I, I couldn't follow it, honestly. I mean, I, I just really couldn't. And, you know, but, you know, like like I was saying, I don't dissect music the way you guys do. So it's just, I hear what I hear. And that was my response to Daniel, you know. And he was like, oh, well, you know, is it sick? And I'm, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it's fucking, um, it's. Sick, uh, sick in the head. No. Sick in the head, kid. So it's, it's a little autistic, bro. But I mean, I wouldn't see myself like I wouldn't see myself listening to it again. You know what I mean? Like, or bumping it in my truck. And Daniel's like, dude, he's like, he's like, dude, I listen to this like like a lot. Like, I'm like by yourself. And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like while you're driving or what? He's like, dude, he's like, this is like one of my favorite albums, like all time favorite albums. I'm yeah, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, crazy, dude. Like, for me, like. Like no, like I mean, it was it was a trip and it was cool to listen to, like for the first time, you know what I mean, like just to just to check it out. But like I don't see myself listening to that again. But like I said, I don't I don't really dissect music the way you guys do, dude. So I mean that my take on it is it was just kind of like a funky version of you know like I said, Carcass meets Primus, but in a weird kind of way, and it just sounded like a giant improv to me. You know what I mean? Like if I had drums playing, and they were just playing for a fucking forty five minutes straight, like. I, I could probably write a bunch of weird shit to it. And to me, that's kind of what it sounded like. But at the same time, I know it's not because, you know, it was way too punctual, way too perfect, way too on time. And everything musically about it was very good, but it was just not like, like, it was just not what I would write. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Drew, is this a death metal <clears throat> album? No, no. not To me, no. To me, I'm saying no, not at all. Not at all. It's. I mean, there's death metal vibes, dude. But I mean, it, no, it's not death metal. Too. It's not death metal, deck. <laughs> it's not death metal, deck. <laughs> I mean, I. I mean, uh, like I, I was saying, like, again, you know, I don't dissect music the way you guys do, so don't, you know, don't worry about my opinion, dude. I just, I hear what I hear. It's just, it was very 
intriguing, I guess I could say, you know, because I had never in my life heard shit that wacky or going that off topic so hard musically. But um, I think whatever they were trying to do, they fucking nailed it, dude. Whatever they were trying to do, whether I'm familiar with it or not, they fucking nailed it. So that's the positive thing I could say about it. Nice. I think you're right about that. I think you're right about not really hearing anything like this. Because I, I also, I don't think there's anything like this album. Even with this band, they have, this is kind of a, an outlier. And I, I feel like the way the album cover looks is the way that this sounds. The two faces? Kind of like, because it, it, it obviously looks like uh, H.R. Geiger's uh, artwork. Yeah. I don't think that it's it is. It's a knockoff. <laughs> yeah, it's a knockoff of uh, what Geiger would do, you know, like mm-hmm. Alien and um, that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, it, it sounds haunted. It sounds fucking, like, very creepy. I, I don't exactly know what the vibe is, but uh, it, it's uneasy. And the vocals on this, I, I think, help, too. The vocals on it this are so really perfect. fucking good. Yeah, they're there really fucking one song, good. I forget which song it is, but... Oh. For, <laughs> yeah, it made me think of Big Boss from Root. Oh, really? Yeah, it was the weirdest vibe I've ever gotten from an album that sounds so unlike the album it made me think of. <laughs> 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 Did that sentence even make any sense? But, yeah, no, I th- it must have been like the f- fifth song, maybe? Or around there, anyways. Like, the the guy starts chanting, I'm like... Why it does this make me think of Big Boss and Root, <laughs> Cargara sort of thing? Yeah, I feel like all the vocal parts on it are memorable. Like I remember each each and every part. I think it's in the second song or the third song, um, "Silent Journey," where like at the beginning, there's a bunch of these weird, kind of distorted vocals, and he goes, "A morbid refreshment." <laughs> That's the one that and like, then, turn, like, like, breaks into a really bouncy bit at the beginning after the uh, the vocals, right? Yeah, yeah, because like you were saying, yeah. the first two songs really don't have anything to do with metal at all, and it's no. not till the third song that it actually um, starts kicking in with the with the yelling vocals. Yeah, but that fourth song, like as soon as the uh, the intro bit, I guess, uh, ended and you know, I kind of kicked into full gear. That was wacky. That was a great start to a song. Yeah, I think the like most of the guitar stuff on here really is like Voivod. Like, they go into there. There's maybe like three or four parts, which which isn't a lot, that actually have like regular cording, and that are like uh, that could be on a regular Swedish death metal album. But everything besides that is like these Voivod chords, or like like jazz stuff, and then maybe on a weird 80s goth goth rock album or something and i think that's yeah. where you maybe get uh, some of those the the clean vocals yeah yeah you can definitely hear like fields of the nephilim that sort of thing on here yeah i was getting a lot of um into the pandemonium celtic cross yeah yeah this and um you know obviously talking heads uh voivod but there was the like talking heads yeah with the vocals and shit I got a girlfriend. She's better than that. Now that she's better than and this. And then, um, you know, like the chameleons and shit, and Minutemen. Sure, the chameleons makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and Joy Division, sort of like bass lines and shit. And um, I was also, you, you know, uh, Naked City and shit, right? Yeah, the uh, that Japanese guy. Uh, John Zorn, and um, I guess like. He had another band called Painkiller, where uh, the drummer from Napalm Death was a part of it in, like, 91. Wait, so, so what the hell was Naked City? I, I could have sworn it was one guy who was into grindcore, and he hired a bunch of jazz musicians to kind of go over the album and make it a, like, grindcore bass with just jazz all on top. I'm not really sure, like, the story of, of it, but I just know... Uh, that guy John Zorn is like a, a big part of like that sort of jazz grind scene and he came up with the band Naked City and Painkiller and um, that's where um, 
I see this sort of music where it's like kind of jazz metal shit going a little bit more wonky and shit because you can find on like this harmonization there's not like any fucking horns or any brass instruments saxophones on this and yeah yeah it, there's no there's not even any key well there are keyboards yeah. but they're used um yeah, they're, they're, like they're in used a, in a way that's not gimmicky i yeah, think yeah like I in don't a really, michael myers no, like they're, type they're way sparingly so, yeah yeah because go ahead I, I really don't think that there's any gimmicky about this album because it, it's all just like guitar based drums for the most part yeah it's all just it's all spare and they're not really showing off or anything it's just kind of doing parts that fit together you know well or fit together by themselves too you know and um yeah it seems like a crutch for those kind of jazz bands is like oh hey look we got a fucking saxophone in here let's uh use it in a way that hasn't been used before and call it uh, you know de a jazz grind or whatever whereas like these guys don't rely on any of that sort of gimmick shit it was just like death metal musicians doing this sort of like jazz influence metal and like naked city and i could say like cynic too with focus that came out the same year it's more like jazz guys doing death metal and it's not coming out so right you mean you mean death metal guys playing like jazzy that's what i'm saying i'm saying carbonize is doing death metal do uh, death metal guys doing jazz and then vice versa with like cynic and naked city and shit death metal yeah, guys I, getting freaky <laughs> yeah getting a little bit freaky getting a little bit get a little <laughs> freaky now get a little bit freaky now <laughs> yeah so yeah that's what that's what i i kind of feel with like that shit and you know like La Scrawl and stuff, like oh, like hey. Oh yeah, La Scrawl was kind of fun. I liked La Scrawl. Yeah, where it's like ska grind. Um, I feel like theirs was a little bit more gimmicky. This. Yeah, exactly. Is... Cause it has like the little horn sections and shit, and it kind of bounces between it dynamically of grind and then going to the ska parts. Where this well, is only... kind of like going, doing both of those at the same time, even like infusing them. Yeah, well, not only that, it's it's more like this band sounds different every single release, I think. Yeah. And they don't stick with one sound. You know, because after this album, they do one more that's even less metal. death metal than this. Yeah, yeah, it's even less metal than this. And uh, I like that one. I, I don't know that a lot of people would. Screaming Machines, it's a, it's an interesting album. It's still creepy. It's no. very, it's, it might be creepier than this. No, that shit was sick when I, when I heard it, but... You know, I like all that fucking outsider weird shit, so it was definitely something for me. And I feel like this album was like the perfect middle point between For the Security and Screaming Machines. Like, it was just as metal, not so grindy as For the Security was, but, uh, you know, definitely more metal than Screaming Machines was. Yeah, I think that um, For the Security, that one was probably like on the same wavelength as um afflicted's prodigal son yeah yeah because like it's still death it's it's still death metal but you also have these like psychedelic um not interludes but interstitial parts and then things that go behind the grinding stuff as as more of a gimmick than this because this is uh, musically kind of far away from death metal really yeah, it's um, definitely sort of avant-garde, but I don't think they were trying to go at it like in an arty way. It was just more of like maybe out of boredom with uh, what they were <laughs> doing as musicians. Because uh, I know they were a bit weird in, um, you know, Therian and shit. And then, um, yeah, Therian is Therian's weird, but in a totally different way. Yeah, and then, um, you know, obviously Lars like an entombed... Uh, you know clandestine era and wolverine blues and shit so they got a little weird in a different way but definitely not so uncanny like this are you guys a fan of wolverine blues paul dan that's Fred? kind of my least favorite death and roll album i i kind of like it i kind of don't but i kind of do like it's good for what it is like but it's definitely not something i listen to or you know put on above all the other good ones yeah, yeah maybe i'll just I, say i, I, I like I don't it but it's it, uh, like, so I don't hate it, but I don't reach for it. I don't <laughs> yeah. own it, so. Yeah. 
<laughs> but if someone were playing that's, that's it at a party fine. or something, I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain. Turn that shit off. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 how I feel too. I mean, but I mean, you know, hanging out with Daniel, he's he, he always wants my take. You know, either for <laughs> for comical reasons or not. You know, he's just like, hey, what do you think of this? And I'm just like, dude, <laughs> come on, dude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if I was at someone else's, you know, home setting and they were playing it, of course, you know, I was like, oh yeah, it doesn't bother me, but it's like, that's not entombed, you know what I mean? But I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. It's just, uh, it's one of those albums that's just, I don't know, it's just, it, to me, it's just so different and just like, like, what are you guys doing? You know what I mean? Like, if you're gonna do something that far out of, you know, from what the band originally started, change the fucking name, dude. Like, just, I mean, there, there's been a lot of bands that, you know, they'll have plenty of different genres within the same name, and I know Daniel likes that kind of thing, but with me, I think, like, if you're gonna change it that dramatically, just, you know, start another project, dude. Like, that's just my take on it, though. <clears throat> it definitely makes it less confusing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, less confusing. It's easier if you pick up a band, like an album, whatever, from a name that you recognize, and you know what to expect. When you have a band like Tiamat, you're like, oh, man, I love Samir and Cry, and then you pick up Wild Honey, Skel- Skeletron, or whatever the hell that <laughs> album's called, and you're like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, at the same time, though, I, I respect their artistic vision. That's what they envisioned for their band. It's, it's their band. It's their right, but... You know, as a listener, it definitely makes it easier to know what to expect when you pick up an album from a band. Yeah, that's true, too. <clears throat> yeah, Drew, probably, didn't you... I was going to say, Paul, go ahead. I was going to say, it's probably weird to try to market, like, let's say, uh, the Wolverine Blues as, like, a new album by a new band, rather than just riding the Entomb wave that they've already had momentum for, you know? Yeah, but can you imagine the fan base that they lost because of that? So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in in a way, like Entombed, kind of only had the one album, and then they kind of veer off like right after that. Even Clandestine is is uh, very different, I think. Are you talking about uh, Left Hand? It, it has some of that yeah. death and roll influence in it, but it's still like very much death metal. A little bit more no, hardcore. It, 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 yeah, I would say hardcore is um, is a big part of like what Entombed went for, and I guess the Swedish uh, death metal scene as a whole. I might actually like Clandestine more than La Fanta. Holy shnikes! Crazy shnikes! Shnikes! <laughs> <laughs> what about uh? What about that Convulse album, Dan? That we're always fucking bickering about, you know, like. You know, uh, you know the convulse the, that the, I like. You know, like the the. Are you up. talking about the rock and roll one or the Re- first convulse album? Reflections. No, I mean, well, yeah, the, the the rock and roll or death and roll, whatever you guys want to call it or whatever. You know, like, I mean, you, you like that one better than the first release? Um, you know what? I think so. Yeah, how about I think you, Paul? so. How about yeah, you, same thing. Fred? Huh? No, nah, world without God for me. Uh, the first album. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but Drew, Drew, you said you don't even like that one. <gasps> and that, no, I, I like that one. I just I prefer that uh, that red one that came out somewhat recently. What was it like five, six, seven years ago? I don't remember the red one. Yeah, it was, it was it was a while ago. Yeah, like twenty thirteen or something, right? Evil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one was really fucking good, dude. That that one was. I mean, to me, I, I think that's probably my favorite. So far, you know, but I do like the first one way more than the fucking uh, Death and Roll one that you guys like. <laughs> you know what's kind of bizarre <laughs> is I think right after they did that one, they started working on an EP and then an album that kind of went back to the Death and Roll sound a little bit. So oh, it's like they? Death, yeah, so it's like Death Metal, Death and Roll, Death Metal, Death and Roll, even though it took a long time to do that. Hmm. That just seems to be their pattern, I guess, huh? That, that's what it seems to be, I would say, yeah. I remember listening to bits of the new one, or new one, the newest one, anyways, Death Star. Yeah, the and, summoning. Uh, yeah, that did that did not do it for me. I only liked that one song, the single off of there. Uh, everything else kind of was boring. Yeah, I didn't. Well, that's, that. that's the one with like, what's that? What year was that? I believe that was maybe like what, 2020? Like two or three years ago, yeah. Yeah, I haven't yeah. heard it, man. I haven't heard it at all. You're, it's you're okay it's it's. It's their, it's like their Wolverine Blues. It's not that great. Damn, that shit has a 30 on Metal Archives. <laughs> there's one, 
I'll just say there's one wow. good song on there, the uh, the summoning. That's that's all I can really vouch for because I remember wanting to like that thing, just because the summoning was so good. And then the I saw the album cover, and isn't it like a bunch of ants walking on a planet or something? Yeah, it's like a metallic ball or something. I remember that. Yeah, it, it looks like a fucking. Um, yeah, kind of looks like an Outer ants. Limits, a fucking DVD cover or something. Yeah, a bunch of <laughs> ants and spiders crawling on like a barbed wire earth. <laughs> That's fucking badass. Fucking like metal. <laughs> but um, maybe we should listen to uh, the song I, I picked for this one, uh, just to, you know, have our thoughts on it more immediately. Um, Which one did you pick, anyways? Let me see. I picked uh, one of the more metal songs because I felt like it'd be too easy to, you know, pick uh, Vlad Tepes or Lord of Damnation. So <laughs> I picked uh, the voice of the slain pig. So uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to listen to that right now. We're back yeah. from listening to that. Uh, what do we think? It sucked. <laughs> sucked ass. <laughs> there, there was a I riff. Thought it, thought it sucked titties. I will, I will never not say that after our song. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on there's what a it's riff. sucking. There's a riff on <laughs> another song that sounds like pretty similar to that one. Where it's like, junk, 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 junk. But he goes, I think I'll go fly. Out on the other side. <laughs> yeah, all this, all this, all these songs are very. Uh, you can they tell that they're the using same the same album. Yeah, they're they're using the same, you know, parts to, uh, you know, make it and it doesn't. It's not like they're arranging it differently, but they have the same formula for like the whole album, pretty yeah. much. Just just done in, um, in uh, just different more interesting ways i guess yeah and it seems very stream of consciousness yeah and it's like you know from the beginning of the album you know we all said it's like getting furthest away from being remotely metal and then later and later it gets more and more metal like this track i picked it because i thought you know it's going to be one of the more death 
death and death grind uh, sort of tracks. So it has like the chugs in there, blasting, and uh, you know they're hopping in between doing their like weird groove parts, their Voivod, uh, you know, quarter riffs, and then uh, you know into their uh, weird vocal passages too. Yeah, I really liked um, Lord of Damnation. I know you said that was like one of the easier tracks, but I like that one. Yeah, I wanted to do like a deeper cut because I felt like, yeah, those songs are fucking sick. And I think if you listen to those, you'll be hooked. But I wanted to play something uh, a little more deeper into the album. All right. Uh, w- once again, I don't mean to hijack your guys' shit, but. Um... Uh, like I was saying, I don't really dissect music the way you guys do, but would it be weird or, you know, not accurate to say that some of these vibes on this album somewhat kind of remind me of Castle? That Doom, like that Death Doom band? band? Yeah. Well, the, Dan, you know, you know Castle, the one we were bumping the other night or whatever, the proggy kind of weird. Yeah, these guys uh, are familiar with that one, too. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know why or how, but I just kind of get weird fucking sensations that they kind of fucking sound like that a little. Not not musically, but maybe their fucking vibe. I don't know. I'm probably just drunk, dude. I don't know. <laughs> no, I I, I I think maybe the vibe kind of is something similar because it's so. Both of those albums are so different from everything else that you'll hear. You'll never really hear another castle. And you'll never really hear one of these. And they both have this haunted, uh, like, creepy sound, I guess. Yeah, because, like, with albums like this, I don't know, you know, because they're obviously extreme. Not in this album in particular. Not, like, in a metal sort of way. Um, with some of their more, like, jazz type of tracks. But, like, where would you even put this into if it wasn't like attached to being like uh, death metal you know like it's just kind of hard to place it into to something uh that isn't extreme as uh, metal as a genre as a whole you know Mm. yeah i i might put this in the same area as like the that japanese band gonanish i don't know if you guys know who that is yeah that uh that yeah that band that uh jeff wagner wrote about yeah they like they, you could call it a prog death metal band, but again, that's one of the one of these outliers where it really doesn't sound like anybody else, and it's weird and it's kind of creepy and gives like just like an off-putting vibe, I guess. Yeah, and like what um, Drew was saying earlier with uh, being a clash between Carcass and Primus, like you know, Primus is didn't they create their own genre or something? <laughs> Weren't they like? Uh... Yeah, Pri- I, mean, I think me, Primus is its own drama or own genre. Yeah own drama own drama <laughs> but yeah they so. had tommy the cat <laughs> tommy the cat is my name and i say unto thee they call me mr no one out. hey hey baby want you come on down with me hey baby don't you want to come on lay my side <laughs> say, baby. Too, say many baby. Puppies. <laughs> too many puppies too many puppies i've been shot in the dark Bum, bum, Too many bum. puppies. Well, I say not to bark. I don't know. Yeah, so it's just like one of those fucking eclectic albums that only belong to a band and not to. I don't think any genre, uh, you know, kind of encapsulates what it's doing. It's just these musicians coming together, making this music uh, for their, you know, for this project and it's really hard to emulate and i don't think that there's many bands nowadays doing it i think i yeah i don't i don't think many people give a shit about this album no i don't think so either Uh, because the the i was gonna say the people that oh what were you gonna say i was gonna say the the more competent guys that know about this album and did little podcasts on them was radical research and uh you know they talked about this yeah and radio free insmith they uh, both talked about these albums, so it's a little bit more competent and uh, a little bit more, uh, 
educational and shit. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 straight up for guys who are like into weird stuff in general. Yeah. And like the only other bands I can think of that sort of sound like this, but I don't know if they're like conscious of doing it, was like that Slovakian band uh, uh, Wade that I showed you. They're like from like 2000. One two thousand three, that they did uh, s albums that sounded like that um, with the uh, barriers and uh, decadence. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of the Slovakian bands took the prog thing and like went totally jazzy with it. Yeah, so that's like one one band I can kind of think that would would take this sort of style, and then um, Infimia Inf- Inf- from Italy. They they have an album Infimia. I don't know if I know that band. Yeah, they're they're just like some. Uh, they said progressive death metal. Uh, they have a release, a self-titled album uh, from 1994, and uh, this album is kind of doing like that kind of jazzy shit, but not as not perfectly like uh, disharmonization. Yeah, I, I was gonna say like. People that would know what this is are probably people that are into um, just like Swedish death metal in general. And usually when you get people that are into that kind of stuff, it's usually like demos and the first album. And then they kind of don't mess with uh, anything after that. Yeah. And even the death metal, Swedish death metal book fucking hardly has anything to say about Carbonize. Why? What did he say about him? He was just saying, uh, they're surely missed. <laughs> and he didn't really talk <laughs> about, like, the album disharmonization or anything. And it was just, like, a little paragraph at the end of the book where he talks about <laughs> all the bands, you know? Yeah, there were some funny comparisons in that book when it came to, like, uh, what he had to say about bands. I remember when it, he I read his uh, Mon Amarth song, he said this is basically the um, Anna War of Death Metal. <laughs> yeah. And that makes sense. That makes sense. You yeah. know, and it's kind of in- it's it's kind of interesting too. Like I didn't know this until just recently, but um we haven't really talked about this, but this is basically going on at the same time as uh Therion. Oh yeah. And yeah. I didn't know this, but the demo the Carbonize and Therion both had demos in 1989. And both of the demos had Maddie Carkey from uh, Dismember on vocals. Yeah, I know the demo from Carbonize had him on there. Um, yeah, the I one from Therion, Therion had him too. Yeah, because I, I know I like those uh, the first three albums from uh, Therion, but I haven't heard any of the demos from them. I think the, the later two go, or maybe not the later two, the, the third one is more... Um, like heavy metal uh, melodic death metal influence rather than just uh the giant heavy uh hm2 swedish death metal kind of thing yeah because it's funny it's like uh, i think i showed drew this um i was telling him about maddie karki being in carbonized and we had watched uh that live video where maddie's uh microphone goes out and then he just says fuck it and he like jumps into the crowd. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so young right there, huh? <laughs> I think he I think he was about sixteen right there. <laughs> yeah, that's just funny. It reminds no, me it's... of the the convulse live video where his like guitar strap falls off, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His the the guy from Convulse, his guitar strap comes off and it takes him like two minutes to get it back on. <laughs> so he's like on stage struggling to get his guitar strap back on. <laughs> oh, that's just funny. Well, what were you saying? Um, I don't even remember. You oh, oh. Drew the that video. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's it's Carbonized playing live and it's Therion. It's it's the two bands in one show, but it's we all the same guys. Yeah. I think there there may have been one member switch. Yeah, like, I don't think ma- I don't think uh, Lars from Carbonized was in Therion. I don't know if he played live for them either. N- no, he w- he wasn't. He was in Therion, but not till later. He wasn't in there till like '96, I think. Oh okay. So yeah, you have you you kind of have a new lineup, I believe, after um, for the security. Yeah, and I think before that it was like a couple other uh, 
members in there too, um, besides just Matty Karki and Lar uh, besides the Therion guys too. I think there was like another guitarist. I'm sure there is. All the members that were in Carbonized had some other connections that, like, when you look at the lineup overall, it's actually really impressive. Like, the, the people that were in there and the bands are connected to, like, even beyond Therion and Entombed, you have Dismember, you have, uh, you have Morbid, you have Excruciate, you have Morpheus. Like, there's so many bands that these yeah, general guys surgery. were connected to, unanimated. You got money from Bolin. Uh, I believe it was, um, <laughs> I believe it was, dude, I believe it was Lars that had a project with, uh, some of the guys from Sinister called Monastery. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that one before. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you don't know that one, Paul? No. They used the same album art as that band, um, shit, what the hell were they called? X, uh, it's like the name of a fucking archaeologist. What what do you call that? Like when you fucking dig Ex up the excavating? bones? Yes, excavation. They 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 had the same uh, album cover as uh, excavation. Hmm. And it's funny if you li if you I, I forgot how cool this actually is. The monastery demo. If you listen to it right at the beginning, there's a guy going record it, and then they all and then it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't cut that out, huh? <laughs> Recalled it. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that other side project. Um, I believe it was like guys from uh, Carnage and Cadaver. They had a, a side project called Heater Heater. You guys know what that is? I think you showed me them, yeah. Fred, do you know Heater Heater? I don't think so, actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it's... it's uh, yeah, it's guys from Cadaver and Carnage, and I think that one of the bass player was in like Algol and um, Premator too. So, so and also that some Algol album really needs a reissue. Which one? The uh, Woods of something? What is it yeah. called? Enter the Woods of Enchantment. Yeah, that one's really cool. I like that band picture as well. Yeah, cool, no, cool. Uh, no, I have not heard this. When Johan was in Norway, that's the demo. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> intro, the intro shouldn't be skipped. It's really interesting. They're singing. It sounds like they're singing a, um, a, a like children's fucking lullaby, but they're talking about uh, like ripping apart a corpse and like drinking the fluids and shit. Yeah. And they all sound like a bunch of drunks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool um, stuff. The the mayhem outro and death crush, all the little flowers are singing. I don't know if I remember that one. I remember that big intro with the drums, the dong 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 dong. Oh, Sylvester and Fang, yeah. But the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's an outro on some version of it where it's basically all of them just singing. All the little flowers are singing. It's it's bizarre. Yeah, I'll it, check that out again. I, I don't remember that one. Reminds me yeah, of that. Uh, it's like a it's like a minute long. It's just weird. That uh, romper prop uh, intro for that. Uh, oh, prop. What's it called? Uh, what, what was that album? Uh, well, where it goes? Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Yeah, gargle comics. Yeah, and it was like a little. Theme where it's like dun. Just... I think the song is called Quack Quack. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes dun 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 dun. Wee 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 wee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was like, raw, raw, raw. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. Well, I was thinking, um, what this, what we listened to uh, a couple of weeks ago, that cadaver uh, single. This one kind of having like that weird, sort of carbonized uh, feel to it too. And then, um, do you remember I was showing you that Scott Walker album? Um, the drift where it just sounded uh, I think you had a comparison for it and I kind of forgot what it was yeah I, I don't remember what it was either maybe I, I don't remember what comparison I had oh okay but yeah I was just thinking of like more stuff that sounded like this or I don't know if it's actually like an influence on any of this but um, definitely trying to do what this album perfected and then there's like 
virus too from Norway. Um, but they're not I think as extreme. Yeah. I think Virus straight up said that Talking Heads and Voivod were their influences. Yeah. They yeah, could definitely hear Voivod. Uh... Which is interesting for a metal band because uh, I don't think I'm, I don't think they really accomplished that. I don't think they've done anything that's catchy like uh, the Talking Heads. The Talking Heads, I don't know. Their, their stuff is just infectious. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I could probably see with like they're trying to do with like vocals, but they're not like anything right. memorable. But Carbonize is memorable in its own way. This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful wife. How did I get here? <laughs> yeah, how did I get here? And the day has gone by. Oh, the flow in under. Yeah. That's where he's doing that really cool dance. <laughs> Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then but, um, no, you're you're right though. I mean, as as much as I probably prefer for the security overall, uh, this harmonization it stands out a lot more. There's no there's no two ways about that. It, it's a unique album. Yeah, you're just being nice, Fred. Stop being nice. <laughs> it's unique in that it fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's there you uniquely go. bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad in a can. good way. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the best way I could put it. Yeah. It's definitely not harmonization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not at all. I I'm, I'm getting a little fucking ripped here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. We only got another hour. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's like about 30 minutes or so we have a cap. But um okay. I was going to say I think I remember showing you this band, Dan. It was uh, some band called uh, Pavixki. It was like some Australian two-piece where it was like a... Da Vinky? <laughs> da Bussy? No. Uh, Pavixki. Uh, it was like Australian two-piece piano doing like some fucking crazy-ass shit that sounds like guitar riffs. But, you know, obviously with the sounds of a grand piano over like jazz and like grind sort of drums it doesn't sound too much like anything carbonized does but it's, it's just another sort of outlier band that uh that uh you know is they're incorporating like jazz sort of stuff into what they're doing but i think it's coming from the other direction of jazz guys doing death metal rather than death metal guys doing jazz no i don't i don't think i remember that one yeah, and there's just a couple other guys I wanted to talk about too with the uh, more like free jazz, like actual just jazz, jazz, nothing to do with metal, but it's like as extreme and more outlier within that genre. There's like, uh, I don't know if you guys listen to any of the shit, but um, Hermeto Pascal and uh, Ronald Shannon Jackson and uh, Peter Brotsman Octet. Like, that's like some of the most extreme jazz shit that. Uh, I think uh, I've come across and shit. Extreme not, jazz. Not area I venture frequently into. Yeah, it's just just musicianship wise, and because uh, most of that stuff is like straight up improv uh, shit that they're just doing all in the room, recording live, and it's like insane. But it's the wrong podcast for this. So. <laughs> No, I, I I don't really know uh, much jazz stuff at all. Yeah, I know I know Karen Krog from Norway. That's all I know. No, I don't know them. <clears throat> but yeah, maybe we should get into uh, the last words about this shit. Last last takes about uh, carbonize. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we could do that. All right, uh, Fred, go ahead. Wait, me? No, this is your pick. <laughs> you start this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh, like I said earlier, Carbonize, this is uh, a, not even a damn near, but just a straight up perfect album where you can feel the chemistry between all these musicians playing their own individual parts, not relying on, uh, you know, the guitar to provide the progression of the music and each having just my attention at all times it's like I can 
fade out the guitar and just zone in on the drums because this guy's for like a death metal drummer or coming out of death metal he's doing like really intricate like at least unheard of stuff that I would never possibly do on the drums or would never think to do as well as like fusing it so well with the vocals that are on here they're like placed perfectly and they have a different uh, you know array of vocals on this album but they're they're just like so spot on like and it just makes you feel like so like unwelcome to this album like from a metalhead's perspective coming from for the security you're gonna come listening to this the first track thinking oh you know let's let's hear what these guys are doing and they come out with the instrumental intro that's like four minutes long that's like nothing they've ever done before and just when you think hey you know hopefully they come with something a little bit familiar they go even yeah, they don't yeah they go even further out and it's like by the third song that's like when you can sort of hear some semblance to uh for the security but it seems like further and further they go more into the roots of like that death grind but they are still uh you know a far different band and you can hear that even more so where they abandon metal with the uh, screaming machines where it sounds like that uh scott walker album uh the drift i think that was the comparison that you brought up it was uh screaming, screaming machines. machines yeah but yeah that's what i think about this it's perfect the bass is perfect the guitars drums and i know that dan and i had a release for uh our first band Droom, where we did a sort of homage to carbonize on it where we had sort of the guitars like this and you know weird drums but it was nothing is nothing as good as uh you know the original what, so shit. what song was that uh that Droom song on uh that uh what's it called rhythmic dream trans uh, terraformation oh yeah yeah, the ending of the Midnight uh, failed aeronaut. Yeah, I remember Drew messaged me. He said I like that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where we go. That, to that the was all, that's, part. I don't remember how the bass part went. At at the end, the guitar goes boom, doo, doo. Wait, how did it go? It was like doo, 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 Yeah, I think and it's just kind of like this jazzy drum uh, fill for like two minutes or something. Yeah, I think it recorded that right before we did uh, the Atlantic Storms, right? Um, I, I think so, because I know we did a bunch of releases that year. We had Miss of Twilight, we had um, Galicia, the second one, and the first one. Yeah. And then I think that was, yeah, the last one before, um, before uh, Atlantic Storms. Yeah. Yeah, we, we tried. <laughs> It's nothing there's like this though. There's, there's a little homage there. Yeah, I, I like that little EP. It's an interesting one. Yeah, it's more. That's like our grindiest shit. Yeah, it's like another attempt at uh, trying to do a death grind. Oh, a uh, uh, little thing. Do you think this sounds anything like old? Uh no, I don't think this sounds really anything like old. But mm, I, I, I think maybe this thing can be compared to that because it's just so different maybe yeah okay it, it doesn't it doesn't have the uh it doesn't have the same like because old that album the low flux tube if that's the one you're talking about yeah. that one's more like fucking um like motorcycle game that that was like motorcycle music <laughs> almost like white that one's almost like white zombie or something <laughs> <laughs> Am I dragging up? that's not motorcycle music now <laughs> no, that's, no, that's white black zombie. label, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm the one that you wanted. Hell yeah, I'm the super beast. Yeah, born. <laughs> yeah. Devil man, devil man, call him. <laughs> Run it through my head, yeah. <laughs> that's motorcycle music, boy. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the the one guy with the motorcycles tell us. Like Beavis and Butthead music, bro. <laughs> From the devils. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> it's like a, uh, it's like a music video. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's how I see it. But um, Fred, what do you think of this album? Last words. Fred. Fred. Um. It's fuck. What a weird album. Fred, <laughs> you better be fucking honest, bro. Come on now. <laughs> Don't don't um, <laughs> don't indulge in these fuckers autism, bro. Just, Fred, just be real. Fred, what did we <laughs> talk about Fucker, fuckers and their <laughs> autism. <laughs> yeah, it's it, you know what? It's not gonna be an everyday listen for me the way it is for you guys. I I, I like it and I appreciate it. Every day when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to death metal, black metal. I mean, you guys know me. I like the straightforward shit, and this is not straightforward. It's straight it's straight you know me. Too. This is straightforward weird, though. <laughs> it is straightforward <laughs> weird. But that said, I, I do like it. If I ever come across a copy, I will pick it up. Um, but the I, I love the way that it kind of psychs you out with the first two tracks. Because, <laughs> man, like I said, my notes just, <laughs> what the fuck, Paul? <laughs> but, um, no, solid album. Just not... Uh, I'd caution people who are into death metal to approach it with an open mind because if you don't, you're not going to like it. Don't be a fagula. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said the F word on the YouTube channel. Uh-oh. No, I said, I said, fag, I said fagula. Oh. That's a whole new word. Mm. Mm. Click ban. Um, I think, excuse me, I think you're banned. Click. <laughs> All right. Well, how about your take, Dan? My take, I think, um, I think anyone who's really into, I, I would say young people, because I heard this when I was young, and the guys who made it were young, and I don't think this is really an album for Dan. people who are kind of seasoned in, or, or, or at least closed-minded, I guess. Do you think uh, your distant cousin from that party would like this uh no young, young you know, looking guy no he was talking <laughs> you know what he, he was talking shit about beyonce which is a little that that should have been my indicator that's like boomer talk <laughs> you know i was listening like, to this album and it sounds like metallica yeah <laughs> it's metallica dude hey was it metallica <laughs> oh yep hey for yeah. khaleesi <laughs> Hey. Oh yeah, the, the fucking eighties. <laughs> hey, that's Tyrion. <laughs> what were you saying, uh, Dan? <laughs> no, I, I was saying like uh, I would say for for young people who are uh, interested in Swedish and uh, Finnish death metal in general, this has the vibe. But this is something very different. But something that flows really well, and I think. Um, I, th I think anybody with an open mind who's into this kind of stuff will really like this album. It's uh, it's so, it's so much different than everything that like any kind of like prog death metal that you've heard. I feel like and the closest it, thing it, it, is like Namacon, if anything. Maybe, maybe. Um, I feel like all these songs are catchy though. All the all the the uh, vocal parts are catchy. All the guitar parts are catchy. I feel like this is something that you will remember, and it is something that will be uh, kind of in your repertoire forever, even if you don't listen to it uh, that often. I, I personally don't listen to this um, too, too often, but Paul brought this up, and I was like, yeah, this would be a really good one, just because I like it. And um, I really don't see why a whole lot of people wouldn't like it, because I love it. So there you go. Yo. Uh, oh, uh, my take on the album? Yeah, final thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts? Um, shit, man. I mean, it, it's like I kind of feel like um, like I shouldn't even be commenting on it because like it's so out of my realm, you know. But um, my personal thoughts is uh, I wouldn't listen to it again. It's just it's too weird <laughs> for me. <laughs> It's way too weird. It makes no sense. It's um, I know you, you know when you're listening to it, you hear certain uh, aspects from other bands and you know certain things like that. I know I never even really as, thought um, about that. Well, I mean, just like as far as a death metal 
you know genre goes i mean i hear blast beats in it and those blast beat parts were really good i like those parts and um i just heard it and thought it was cool of, uh, uh no i i wouldn't say it's cool i would just say it's just <laughs> fucking um sick it exists it exists and i i wish um it didn't. I mean, <laughs> right, right, yeah. I just, it exists I, I in 1993, <laughs> and listen to it, whether yeah, you like just, it or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether I like it or not, it's there. But I mean, I, it, for me personally, I, I would, I would uh, not listen to it ever again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, you fucking bastard. <laughs> 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 That's my Grunt. Fun oh yeah well um you got any uh information on fossilized before we go yes uh, what do we have doing uh, <laughs> we got um so far we got one one song recorded and pretty much somewhat done we're gonna do one more and uh, aside from that additional song um i think i'm going to do a strictly classical acoustic song with uh jason so again it probably will be a three track ep release but only with two death metal songs the third one's going to be strictly acoustic and heavily influenced by carbonized (laughs) heavily heavily influenced by carbonized (laughs) they have good they have they have have good acoustic tracks i will say that though show them to me bro because i didn't hear any (laughs) uh the the (laughs) listen listen to the first track dude it goes that's, brain, brain, that's, brain, uh, brain, that's a clean guitar. Yeah, that's a clean guitar. Of, that's yeah, a clean you're guitar. right. I, I don't I don't know that there are any acoustic parts. There are clean guitars though, which could be translated into uh, acoustic. Uh, acoustic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it was, it was, um, it was uh, different for for um, you know for what it's worth. It was different. I never heard anything like that. And uh, I'm not trying to shit on it too hard, but I mean my honest opinion is like you know I'll never listen to that again. But it was just uh, it was crazy to hear because it, it sounded like a giant improv to me. So, you know, take it how you will. Um, crust crust punk cool. forever, dude. Sure, whatever, dude. Yeah. Well, you like disrupt, don't you? <laughs> uh, I do like disrupt. Yes. Extreme noise terror. Uh. Mm, mm, or what was that four. other band you like? Was it tragedy? Ex- no, I like excruciating terror. That's probably what you're confused. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. I, I do like tragedy, though. I do like tragedy. Tragedy's pretty good. I mean, lyrical content is kind of weird, but you know, I like the band. All right, everybody else, name a cross band now. Me too, uh, or no? His hero's gone. <laughs> Neo Crust. Neo. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm gonna go with. Fuck, I don't know, man. The Krusty Krab. The Krusty Krab, yeah. The Killer Krab. <laughs> the Killer Krab. The King Krab. <laughs> I don't know, the man. Creepy Krab. What would your crust band be, Dan? Um, uh, maybe Scarp. You like Scarp? Really? Yeah. Yeah, the one with the lady dudes, singer. Uh, those dudes are from uh, Seattle, aren't they, or some shit? I have no idea. They have that song, more, um, Not a Human. I like that song. It ends with, like, a reggae part. Oh. All right. <laughs> so not really press. <sighs> Just kidding. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, if you're white and you have dreadlocks, I guess you're crust nowadays, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm crust, Jonathan dude. I'm white Davis and I have dreadlocks. The... <laughs> Corn's crust? Ha 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 